Ayurveda can operate on in two main directories. The one is the Pranic Ayurveda, the other is the Doshic Ayurveda. Doshic Ayurveda, that's what's commonly practiced right now, uh, and it's really hard to find the practitioners who know much about Pranic Ayurveda. Everybody's operating on the level of dosha. In Pranic Ayurveda, we strive to balance the flow of prana through our energy channels. So we want to increase the prana flow through the nadis and the conversion of prana into the life energy that can sustain the entire being and regulate the doshas already on its own. So it's not specifically needed to regulate the doshas, but to increase the flow of the prana through the channels, which will then regulate the doshas. Why is that happening? Is that because prana is the positive channel, is the vibration. So prana is the positive channel. When we are working and improving the flow of the positive channel, it then it regulates the negative channel, which is the energy field. Dosha, it is a negative force, is basically a destroyer of life. And regulating and modifying the dosha on its own requires the endless effort put into it. And that does not improve the flow of prana in the end. Raw food, that is the food that contains most of prana as living force. Uh, and when we cook the food, we reduce uh, this life force. Uh, and the food is becoming more like of a fossil fuel, which more like not the energy, but the matter itself uh, already. Uh, but the smell is great when you're cooking, uh, but when you're eating it, the flavors are reduced and this is why you need to spice it. This is why you need to salt it in order to bring those uh, aromas back um, somehow. Uh, it still has prana, of course. It's not like we're eating like stones or dead matter completely, uh, which even has prana too, but it's more like a universal level prana, right? Because everything is alive. Even the, even the rocks are alive. So the food becomes more like a matter and uh, turning matter into energy requires a more complex process, whereas turning energy into energy does not require that complicated process can go easier. But both of these um, modes of metabolism require specific pathways or specific system in uh, for the energy conversion. The energy is not homogeneous. We know that uh, when we talk about energy, we, we really uh, just talk in general terms. But if we refine it to details, we know the frequencies and vibrations and their specific ones. Uh, it's all in the spectrum and in inside the vortex. There's like internal energies, external energies, uh, which can be inverted. And then the also the vibrations and frequencies from the high vibration, which is the low frequency. The high vibrational realm is the low frequency and the uh, high frequency low vibration uh, is the uh, spectrum, the lower spectrum of vortex. This is where uh, the uh, heavier energies reside. So... Uh, like I was saying, it is easy to convert energy to energy, but it requires activation of cold metabolic mode. So we have uh, metabolism and we've listed the principles and process of metabolism, but there's also modes of metabolism. Not many people know about them. Metabolism can actually be active in different modes. Uh, and one of the modes, and uh, I mean, this categorization is not the ultimate one, uh, there can be different other modes too, uh, which we'll talk later as maybe you know, in a separate class. But here the uh, we talk about the cold metabolic mode, which is the cold energy synthesis. Uh, this is where people uh, who eat raw food and do not feel, do not eat food at all, uh, or uh, they go on to mono ingredients like mono diet and fruitarians and then raw foodists, and then pranic eaters, they live in this mode. But this mode requires, again, the proper activization of this system. Uh, people who go on the raw food nutrition, 
they may fail quickly if they don't know what they're doing and how to uh, activate their cold metabolic mode properly. The one that converts prana into the electrical impulse, which is called chi, um, then they can fail because then the prana, if it doesn't convert properly, it will turn into vata. And vata is the destructive force. It can damage the tissues. And this is what usually happens in people who inappropriately practice raw foodism. Okay, but we'll talk about that in a separate class again when we talk about raw nutrition specifically. Uh, so in the lower uh, spectrum of the vortex, we are talking about the conversion of matter into energy, which requires a complex aggregate, metabolic aggregate that is installed within our physical body, uh, which goes from the uh, intestinal flora to the uh, cellular mitochondria. Uh, this is the whole aggregate that functions on the same principle. It's one system. Uh, it's not yet expressed and articulated in Western medicine, but we know about it in uh, through the um, pranic Ayurveda and yoga. So the conversion of matter to energy is complex. It is the hot metabolic mode. It is you. It is the secondary one, because um, nature provided us with these metabolic modes. Uh, one is in order to thrive, and the other is in order to survive. So the um, hot metabolic mode is in the uh, is for the purpose of survival. It's when the uh, fruit and vegetables are scarce, and we need to reserve to the more like of a matter fossil type fuel uh, nutrition, uh, which secretes the higher uh, amount of acidity in our body, triggers the secretion of higher uh, acid production. It results in the higher waste accumulation and toxin formation, and that shortens the span of life because what happens within this metabolic mode is uh, prana, that is used for the life processes because we need prana anyway. And it's just a matter where we get this prana uh, because prana utilized in this metabolic mode is the internal prana, which is instilled within our tissues and cells by our birth as the reserve of the life force for the entire life that can either be preserved or can be wasted fairly quickly. So this metabolic mode wastes our resource quickly, whereas the cold metabolic mode uh, is designed for the purpose of consuming the external prana, the cosmic prana, uh, which is the prana of the raw food and breath. So this is where we get the prana while keeping our resource for ourselves. And in the cold metabolic mode we uh, or cold energy synthesis, we do not form a lot of uh, waste products and the environment of our body is alkaline and we can live longer life, a happier life, uh, a more positive life because the environment of the body conditions the mindset. It's It can be either positive or negative and the positive would actually be conditioned by the presence of alkaline environment uh, or predominance of alkaline environment versus the acidic environment which will put our mind into the negative state of being uh, an aggressive one, right? Because obviously uh, secondary the hot metabolism is designed for heavy products consumption where nothing is growing. That means like uh, people would have to go hunt animals and eat animal meat, uh, which, you know, will require the high acidity and the negative mindset the readiness of the person to go and kill living beings out there. So um, what happened, this is one of the theories, is that during the Ice Age, people had to switch to the secondary metabolism, meta hot metabolic mode, and they kind of stayed in it and never got out. <laughs> now and here and there, we see people who actually uh, jump out of this metabolic mode and go back into the primary metabolic mode, uh, and they can either sustain it and live happily or they can fail uh, and go back uh, with a negative mindset saying this isn't working, it's not for me, but it's not oh, it's not just that, but it's because they're making mistakes. But uh, the, the, uh, the mistakes are conditioned by 
uh, karma anyway. So if they make mistakes and they acquire the neg negativity uh, as a result of it, uh, that means it's their karma. They're not yet uh, prepared for it, but that doesn't mean that they don't have another chance of doing it.